project. My name is Tapio Tangren and I'm doing this presentation together with my colleague Tarek. And since you cannot see us, here's our pictures. So Ferenc is the guy in the left hand side picture with the green shirt and I'm on the right hand side picture with the red shirt. And on the left hand side you can see some of the hardware that we had on in, in a demo last year in Belgium in the Open Networking Summit. So what is Acrino Micromech first of all? So Acrino is an op it's an uh, open infrastructure application blueprint uh, collection. So basically the Acrino itself consists of, of a number of different projects and Micromech is one of those projects. Uh, on this page I have a few link links to, to Acrino and also to the LF Edge. So Acrino itself is, is part of this LF Edge umbrella project. Acrino had the, the third release last summer and we were proud to present a, a blog post related to that about the Micromex. So that's the there's a sort of a longer presentation about the, the topic if you're interested in on available on the Linux Foundation LF Edge website. The in, in the in introduction to this uh, uh, presentation we talked about the junction and, and sort of presented the junction as a sort of a use case for introducing the serverless platform into Micromech. So the junction is one of the biggest uh, hackathon events at least in in Europe so you have a teams of people usually students who uh, write some code related to some challenge some sort of application area during a weekend they stay up all night and, and write code and hang around with like-minded people and then in the end of course there is an award cer ceremony so our challenge was related to, to smart cities and on the on this picture you can see this sort of a miniature smart city that we had built for this event and we had a, a remote connection to it so there's a, there was a web camera you could see the, the city and we had uh, 5G base station, miniature base stations we had this the this is the sort of a miniature Nokia campus that you can see here and there was also LED lights that you could turn on and off with REST interfaces. So that was quite fun. And the challenge of course was that you had to be able to, to, to write some code uh, to servers that are running in this uh, smart city during a weekend. So we wanted had to figure out how to make it very easy to start writing the code. And that's why this serverless platform was useful. So what is serverless? So it's one of the terms that I think is has a sort of sounds a little bit fancy and and mysterious perhaps so I have a short description of what is actually serverless and hopefully I will able to convince you that there is nothing magical about it so I start with this sort of very old-fashioned picture about the application running on bare metal so you have application it's a it's using some libraries it has an operating there's an operating system and the operating system is responsible for handling the the, the different uh, hardware devices such as the CPU and the, the NIC card here in this picture so then in the if you move to a virtual machine then you have this basically you are instead of uh, running your application on, on a real hardware you're running your application on the virtual hardware so you have your own operating system which can be different from the host operating system. You can have your own libraries and, and then you have the your own application running on top of that. And there's benefits about that and then there's uh, sort of uh, not so good things about this. So the benefit ob obviously is that you're completely isolated from the real hardware here. If you run it this virtual machine in a cloud then you don't you have no idea what the real hardware is. You just have this virtual hardware and you're directly operating with the virtual hardware, but you are completely free to choose your own operating system. In a container, it's 
the stack is split up in a, in a different part so you have the on the host side there's the physical hardware and then there's operating system and the operating system is creating the, the containers for you and what the application developer is responsible is creating the application obviously but then also bundling the different libraries and the library versions and so forth and the benefit of this is that the application obviously has dependencies on different libraries and it has dependencies on the different library versions and then the library versions that you are using may can be different from the from the library version that the opera host operating system is providing so that gives you some freedom and then if you're running the container in a the cloud then you only worry about the application and the libraries and then when you have the serverless you only have the application which sounds a bit fancy but of course the, the truth is that there's still you still have the libraries, you still have the operating system, you still have hardware somewhere but now you as the application developer you don't even have to worry about the libraries you only write your application which can be very simple and very short so the benefits of the serverless or function as a service is that it can be very fast to develop obviously because you only write your function and you don't worry about what operating system you are using and what libraries you are using and so forth from a security point of view it's nice because the attack surface is small you are not responsible for updating the library somebody else will will do the updates for you and it also can be small and fast because you can have a lot of different serverless functions and they can be used in the same libraries and to tell then those libraries can be mapped into operating system memory directly and you don't have to you don't need to run separate copies from of the libraries for each application or for each function so it, it can be very fast and it, it can scale very very well but then obviously with this kind of approach not everything is possible and it also does not improve performance so not only it's, it's that you don't have some optimizations that you may be able to do otherwise but it's also that there is might be some overhead involved in this system so just to show very briefly what it looks like so what the uh, serverless infrastructure or function as a service infrastructure creates for you it creates an arrest interface and what you do is is of of course you implement what happens when you, somebody calls that rest interface so in this bash example when somebody calls the, the interface they will get the message hello world back so the ascii text in the python example i have on the right hand side it's a little bit more complex the caller of this rest interface is supposed to give uh, a parameter which can be world for example and then what he or she gets back is is hello plus the original request that was sent so from this example you also s can guess that there's some conventions that you have to follow when you're writing these serverless functions and also that um, there's a uh, language specific templates that must be used and basically what happens behind the, the curtains is that um, the, the infrastructure creates a, uh, a container for you and it includes the code that creates the, uh, the REST interface and it connects this function called handle in, in the Python code to that interface so that uh, the request comes in, the infrastructure handles it, parses it into a Python format, calls this Python function, then returns uh, the string back to the caller using the, the REST a a API. Okay, and Ferenc will have an example about how this works. The serverless framework that we are using is, is OpenFast. It's one of the, uh, it's, it's a open source implementation of a function as a service or also known as it's a, a it's a serverless framework 
So uh, from now, f f uh, here I'm hand handing over to, to Ferenc who will show you how the MicroMac works, has a live demo for you, and he's also showing you how, how this OpenFast works with an example and talk a little bit about what are the next steps in the uh, MicroMac project. Thank you. Hey everyone, thank you for watching our session and thanks Tapio for the great intro. We have built a tiny MicroMac cluster for this presentation. The cluster is formed of two Raspberry Pi 4 nodes running K3S. We also have installed OpenFast to this cluster. First I will demonstrate how the cluster boots up from the network server. After that I will deploy and invoke a couple of functions in OpenFast. And last but not least I'd like to say a few words about the future development of MicroMac. Hope you will like it. Thank you. The timer starts when the nodes are powered up. The raspberries are configured to boot from a network server. In about 16 seconds the network boot begins. The root file system of the Raspberry Pis are mounted via iSCSI from the network server. It takes about 35 seconds until the nodes start replying for ping requests. After 60 seconds, the pods are starting in K3S. The full MicroMac cluster boots up in about 1 minute 45 seconds. Our MicroMac demo cluster is up and running. Let's see what do we have here. So beside the standard K3S and OpenFast pods, we can see a pod which is called stream under the MicroMac namespace. One of the MicroMac nodes is equipped with a Pi camera and we have installed a streaming service on that node. We can check how the stream looks like via the browser. All right, now let's take a look at our OpenFast sandbox. As you can see, we haven't deployed any function yet. So let's go and get one from the default function store of OpenFast. We will deploy node info. So in a few seconds, we can see that the pod has been started and it is assigned on one of the worker nodes. The function also appears in our list here. If we click the name of the function, we can see that the status is ready, so it's ready to be executed. Let's do so. After less than half a second, the function has been executed on the worker node, which has been a Linux machine with four cores, and it's an ARM64 architecture. Raspberry Pi 4 node. Brilliant. All right, we have deployed a function via the web browser, web UI of my OpenFast. So let's do the same now from the command line. I have created a small function that will grab a frame from the previously seen stream and it will de decorate it a little bit. My function is called snapper and I will deploy it now with the fast command line tool. That's it. Soon the list will show that Snapper is ready. So, but instead of invoking it here, this time I will open this function, the URL of the function, in a different browser tab. All right, here's the result. We have captured the frame from the stream, decorated it a little bit, and we can see the result by just uh, executing that function or going to the functions URL. With this, the OpenFast demonstration is over, 
and in the next slides I will talk a few words about our ideas for the future development of MicroMac. Before talking about the future, let's do a quick recap of MicroMac. In a network topology, MicroMac nodes reside on the far edge or on the ultra far edge. Physically, the MicroMac nodes are installed on light poles, buildings, or in moving vehicles. These nodes are connected to an IP network, and multiple of the nodes form a MicroMac cluster. Each node may have access, or may be equipped with different sensors, cameras, or other data sources. The sensors and other data sources are accessible via plugins that are implemented by MicroMac or by hardware vendors. Plugins provide the flow of data and control messages between the actual hardware and the MicroMac applications. The messaging is based on NUTs. Messages are encrypted and signed to ensure security and high data integrity. Depending on hardware adaptation and support, we distinguish between high-level and low-level plugins. A high-level plugin is used when the sensor vendor has abstracted the access to a sensor by providing an API, such as an HTTP REST or RTSP. High-level plugins only require container adaptation. An example of a high-level plugin is, for example, a weather station that has already an HTTP API. Low-level plugins are needed when the hardware is available via kernel API or via some other proprietary interface. Low-level plugins require both hardware and container adaptation. Such examples are like cameras that can be accessed via V4R2 or sensors via accessible via Modbus, for example. Let's talk a few words about our future ideas for MicroMac. We would like to implement more APIs for different sensors, cameras, and we would like to support AI ML workloads. For a long time, we have been looking for a permanent home for a public MicroMac lab, which could be used for collaborative development and validation purposes. Currently, MicroMac has support for Raspberry Pi 3s and 4s, but in the future, we would like to enable MicroMac on multiple different boards, such as the NVIDIA Jetson Nano. Last but not least, in relation with our public lab efforts, we would like to provide an open fast cloud for MicroMac developers. This cloud would allow cross-compilation of functions for different hardware architecture. If you liked our presentation and would like to know more about MicroMac or about the team, please contact us via our GitHub project or look up our contact information at the Akrino wiki pages. Thank you very much.
Tapio, we have got a question from Walter regarding Mac 11. So Mac 11 uh, uh, is yes, that's correct. Uh, we refer to that Mac spec. And uh, it will be used for service discovery. It's currently still in working progress. Hardware requirements for Micro Mac, question from Macrez. Uh, we currently support Raspberry Pi 3B and uh, uh, Raspberry Pi 4. 